What's going on everyone? We're going to continue this train of reviewing older technology as we do. And today we're going to be talking about the iPhone 6S and how it holds up in 2019. Now I've covered this phone extensively, like not even just like me reviewing it one time, putting on a shelf, dude, I've studied this phone. Like I did a research paper on this phone. I've done a doctorate on this phone. Like the amount of documentation I've done on the iPhone 6S is remarkable. Now within the last year, this phone has changed quite a bit, but before going forward, I actually want to look backwards and talk about, you know, what exactly has changed on this phone, you know, any improvements, this and that. So last year when I did that video on, you know, whether the iPhone 6S was still worth it in 2018, it actually had iOS 11 on it, which obviously wasn't perfect. I think we all know that it had lots of bugs in it and the updates that we were getting at that time only made it seem like it was just getting like even worse and it was getting slower, which was really, really weird. Now, unfortunately at that time, I wasn't doing the speed test between the older version and the newer version of iOS. So I lost out on a lot of footage that way, which really sucks. I really wish I was doing that at the time, but it's okay. But since then I installed almost every single iOS version on it since I've owned it. And obviously I've been documenting all of them. You've probably already seen all my iOS versions and videos that I've done on the iPhone 6S. And I will say overall, the phone didn't get too much better with iOS 11, but in the middle of last year. But like I said, with the iPhone 6S, the phone is a lot better now than it was a year ago, which is crazy to believe because of one thing and one thing only your mom. Just kidding. It was because of iOS 12. And even though iOS 12 wasn't the complete redesign, it did fix a lot of the bugs that we were experiencing at the time. So not only did it add all those new features and everything like that, it made the phone a little bit more stable and just a little bit more faster, which is all we need, honestly. And you know, even now it's not perfect or anything. Like I have had problems with battery life. I think battery life did decrease a little bit since I was 11, but it's okay. I mean, I'd rather have a more stable and faster phone than a phone with like better battery life. And it's not even like it's way better. It's just like a little bit better. It's like not even that big of a deal, but I think Apple's going to fix that with the upcoming updates. So also another thing, Apple stopped selling the iPhone 6S, the 6S plus and the iPhone SEs in the Apple stores. I'm pretty sure you can still buy them in like Walmart and other stores like that. Even Best Buy, maybe I have no idea, but the main option, the main opportunity you have of buying an iPhone success is only going to come through the used market, whether that's eBay or Craigslist or whatever, but I will talk more about that in a minute. So that's pretty much a synopsis of what's happened within the last year. That pretty much brings us up to speed on what's happening now with the iPhone success. So looking around the body, I'm pretty sure everyone's seen this phone before. It's the familiar design we've all seen. If you haven't seen one yet, I'll be surprised. We have a 4.7 inch screen on the front. We have a home button with touch ID two. We have a headphone jack on the bottom, a 12 megapixel camera on the back and a five megapixel camera on the front. I'm pretty sure we've all seen this by now. One thing to note though, this phone does have a bunch of bezel on it, which was not unique at the time. This phone came out in 2015. A lot of phones at the time had a lot of bezels. Even in 2016, I think 2016 was when we started seeing the trend of like slimmer bezels a little bit. 2017 especially, that's when it hit. But I'll definitely say that I'll kind of give a pass to the body because it's kind of older, so it's expected. At least they didn't release this type of thing now in 2018 or 2019, whatever, but it is what it is. And actually booting up the phone, like I said, we have iOS 12 on it. It's still getting updates. It's going to, right now it's on iOS 12.1.2. It's going to get 12.1.3. It's going to get all of iOS 12. And I'm pretty sure it's going to get all of iOS 13 as well. I don't know if it's going to go further than that. Now there's a possibility it could get iOS 14, but at the very minimum, at the very least, it's going to stick with iOS 13, which is a good thing. You still have about a little bit over like about a year and a half left of support. So that's a really, really good thing. So in terms of software and everything, as we all know, iOS is pretty smooth. We have a lot more features with iOS 12 than we have had before. Before, especially with iOS 11, we have group notifications now, group FaceTime, which the iPhone 6S does support, and a lot of other things like that. So software is pretty decent. I'll definitely say, obviously, iOS is iOS. It's very, very good, very stable for an OS version, especially coming from iOS 11. I think it was never the best thing, but it it is what it is. But moving on to the performance aspect, I'll say dude, the performance is still very, very good. It's still very capable. This phone does have the Apple A9 chip. It has a dual core processor and two gigs of RAM. And this was actually the first iPhone with two gigs of RAM. And I think ever since then, they've actually future-proofed this phone quite a bit. Even the iPhone 8, which was just released in 2017, that phone also had two gigs of RAM and the iPhone 10 had three and the iPhone XS and XS Max had four. So yes, the newer phones are faster and better and everything like that. But I'll definitely say that the performance is still very, very decent for a phone that came out in 2015, which is turning four years old this year. 
and I think I might have overhyped it a little bit in my earlier videos. You know, I talk a lot about iPhones if you can't tell, and I probably bring this phone up in like every single video of what like an iPhone really should be because it was just like from the previous version from the iPhone 6 to the iPhone 6S, there was a huge difference in not only speed, but like hardware as well. I mean, we're talking about camera sensors, everything. I mean, that thing had, that was a humongous upgrade. And even in 2018, I compared this phone to not only the iPhone 10, but the iPhone 10 or even the iPhone 10s and I found that yes the iPhone 10 10s and 10r are all faster phones they're all better but I do think that the iPhone 6s can definitely still handle its own for sure I think gaming is also pretty good so casual games obviously run fine if you're running like temple run whatever it's gonna be fine but heavier games also run pretty fine as well and now obviously there's some skip frames here and there but the phone really doesn't heat up and i think this phone is a pretty decent gaming i mean it's not a gaming phone don't get me wrong it does support fortnite so if you're into that thing i mean you can play with it but i think as a phone overall and as like a performance heavy phone i mean to answer that question it's a good in performance no doubt it is a little slow here and there but i think overall if you're not really worrying about it if you're not really like trying to dig at it this phone is pretty decent at performance and I could definitely see myself using this phone as a daily phone if I wanted to like if I wanted to switch from my iPhone 10 to an iPhone 6s I think I could definitely do it no problem I mean definitely it would be slower and it wouldn't be as good of an experience but I don't think I would be complaining too much to be honest I mean most of my family members still have an iPhone 6s as a main phone so that's just kind of a little bit about me and my family if you're just interested I don't know now switching to the camera so like I said it has a 12 megapixel camera on the back I think it's a very good camera still I'm, I'm being dead honest I'm making shoot 4k videos which is awesome Awesome. and it has a lot of other options it doesn't have a lot it has a couple other options the iPhone camera at this time was pretty limited you don't have like crazy effects or anything you don't have portrait mode yet you don't have stage lighting because it is a single sensor you don't have a lot of those options and surprisingly I actually did a camera comparison between the iPhone 10R and the iPhone 6S's camera and yes the iPhone 10R's camera is overall better you do have like portrait mode and, and a couple other features like that but I found that the iPhone 6S's camera isn't too far off either man I'm being dead honest I think that the newer technology and cameras is definitely better but the iphone 6s definitely did something right and i think the camera on it is still pretty good the front camera is 5 megapixels. I think it's still pretty decent as well. There's really not too much to complain about here on the camera side of things. I would say as long as you're not comparing it to anything else, you're really not going to care. But a camera is a camera. I'm sure if you get it, if depending on what your needs are, you, it might be worse, it might be better. It's just kind of up to you. But for me, I think the camera is still a pretty decent thing on this phone. Now, my main gripe with this phone, and I've said this with a lot of other iPhones as well around this time, would be the battery life. Man, I think that this phone at the time should have came with like a 2000 mAh battery at the very least. This thing had a 1715 mAh battery and you know since the battery has degraded a bit for a lot of these devices because they're older you might end up having like a 90% battery health or 80% or even worse than that. So what I'll tell you is is that the battery life on this thing even if it was a full maximum is okay it's in the middle of the road and this really just depends and this you just kind of have to ask yourself are you a heavy user of a phone or are you a light user of a phone? If you're a light user you're not going to have any problems with the battery life but if you're a heavy user use your phone a lot throughout the day you might end up wanting to look elsewhere honestly there are battery cases out for this thing so you can always that's always an option apple may actually made one i think it's a pretty decent investment if you're interested in that but and this is where another thing is too and it kind of frustrates me because last year apple was actually doing the 29 dollars replacement for their batteries but they actually stopped doing that i think they raised the prices back up to 50 or 60 dollars but that's not an option anymore you can still go into the apple store and get it replaced but you have to pay a little bit more which sucks but that's always an option you can always replace the battery yourself which i probably would not recommend you doing um, unless you actually know what you're doing <laughs> because parts are fairly cheap on this phone too and i'll talk more about that in a minute but that's pretty much it for the main side of things now like i said some other notable things to note this phone does have a little bit of water protection to it they never really advertised it but it does have a little bit of water sealing don't go and like throwing it in a pool or something but if you get a little bit of water on it, it's not gonna be the end of the world this phone also has force touch which is super cool i like it a lot i use it every single day and and whether apple takes it away later on in the newer iphones whatever they took it away with the iphone 10r the iPhone success will always have it so that's definitely a good thing this phone still has the headphone jack like I stated so if you're into that thing still this phone has it and like I mentioned earlier and I mentioned this about the iPhone 6 video too if you're getting this phone used you probably want to get it because it's the cheaper iPhone or because anything like that I would also want to reassure you that if you crack the screen on your phone if you break something apart in this phone for some reason the parts to repair this thing are very very cheap and on top of that this phone is fairly easy to repair I repaired an iPhone 4 and 4s recently that thing was a horrible experience so that's like the worst thing I ever did in my life but I've repaired several iPhone 6s and some 6s pluses and a 6 plus I think one time 
time too, even a 5S. Those phones are fairly easy to repair. So if you crack the screen, if your camera stops working, if you need to replace the battery, it's really not that hard to fix it. Now, if you've never opened up a phone before, then I wouldn't even try it. But that's kind of one important thing to note, especially good looking forward. And not a lot of people talk about the repairability of a phone. So I'll definitely say that this phone isn't really that hard to repair in my opinion. And it's definitely a pro if you're considering getting this phone and maintaining it for a little bit. So to answer the question that you came here for, is the iPhone 6S still worth it in 2018? I will say this phone is 100% still worth it, 100%, okay? And the reason being is because this phone is very decent in performance, it's very decent overall, and I don't mean that decent like in a bad way, I mean decent in a good way. It's like kind of checks off the boxes in a lot of categories. You get iOS, you get all that experience, you get iMessage, all those things. You get a pretty decent build quality because this thing doesn't bend as much as like an iPhone 6 Plus. You have Force Touch, you have a pretty decent camera, four 4K, pretty decent performance. You have so many good things bundled up into one phone. So, and you're still getting software updates, which is crucial for a phone. You know, even one that came out in 2015, you're still being supported. So if there's a bug, if there's security risk, you're still supported for at least another like year and a half. So this phone checks off a lot of boxes. And I think this might still be the best value used iPhone right there right now. This is like a kind of a contender with the iPhone SE as well. But I'll definitely say if you need a phone that'll hold you over for like a year or two or something like that, this phone will definitely be fine. I don't think it's going to go anywhere anytime soon so i'll say that you can definitely get them used on ebay or craigslist or wherever have you but i will find the cheapest one that i find on amazon and i will link it in an affiliate link down in the description so if you get it from that link it'll help you out because i found it for the cheapest prices but you also help the channel out if you buy it through that link too so it'll mean so much if you could do that and if you ever want to buy another phone or literally anything just buy it through that link so you can help support the channel and i can do more phone reviews and giveaways and all those things like that so but that is pretty much it and if you enjoyed the video definitely hit that like button That'll mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it'll mean so much if you guys could hit that. Also, check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel, all those links are linked down below. I would really appreciate if you guys could check that out too. But more importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out to them.